a little bit of anatomy, right? So the alimentary canal, for the most part, has the same layers in its walls, okay? So here's the lumen. The lumen's where the, the what was food goes, right? Lining the lumen, we have our epithelial cells. Um, scattered among the epithelial cells, we have goblet cells which produce mucus. Okay, those are the little green guys in the picture are the goblet cells. Okay, our uh, the epithelium of the GI tract is columnar is uh, is typically um, columnar epithelium that has membrane expansion at the top. So more Bart Simpson cells, right? So um, uh, sort of cilia at the top, and then tall, thin cells. Okay, so innermost layer is mucosa. Mucosa sits right next to where um, the digesting products are. Okay, so it's through this epithelium that absorption occurs. All right, and the, the epithelium is also the site where the final steps of digestion also typically occur. Okay, so both pieces are happening right at that border. Because this mucosa is where the work is being done, we want to take the mucosa and push it into the materials that are being digested so that we get good surface contact, right? So the muscles that underlie the mucosa their job is to sort of push the mucosal lining up against the contents of the lumen so that we get good um, uh, connection for the uh, absorption to happen by diffusion and for the digestion to happen by the um, membrane associated proteins. Okay, so <clears throat> um, underneath the mucosa, we have the submucosa, and it has the muscles that change the shape, pushing it in. Muscles need nerves to work, right? So we have Meisner's plexus is our um, most, uh, is, the, is the plexus that's closest to the lumen. And it's going to coordinate the, the, the control of the um, mucosal muscles. And then we also have some glands, okay? So these, these uh, um, glandular structures here, you'll notice that they're coming deep into the submucosa as opposed to the goblet cells that are literally part of the epithelial lining, right? So these submucosal glands um, are going to produce mucus, they're going to produce, um, <coughs> uh, some will produce hormones, as we'll talk about later, but they are scattered throughout that area as well. Okay, so that's mucosas first, submucosa is where we have those items, okay? Next layer out, we get our circular smooth muscle layer. Okay, so that's um, going around. Okay, underneath that, so on the other side of the circular layer, we have our myenteric nerve plexus, um, also called Auerbach's plexus. In anatomy, are you learning it by the name or the proper name? Like myenteric or Auerbach's? You haven't talked about it yet? Okay. I'm trying to be consistent. This is the new name. You know, we're trying to get rid of old doctor names, right, out of anatomy. So my enteric nerve plexus is how I'll refer to it. Um, the And submucosal plexus. You won't hear me talk about Meisner's or Auerbach's. Um, I think why not give you the words that have some clues in them, right? What is an Auerbach? Who knows? But a, um, a my enteric nerve plexus, you can at least figure out where it is. <laughs> right? Okay, so um, then we have our longitudinal smooth muscle layer. All right, so the, we have these two layers and they're oriented differently. The circular layer goes around the tube, the longitudinal layer goes along the tube. Okay, together these two um, uh, layers allow for different kinds of motion, right? So the circular layer can squeeze the contents, all right? the longitudinal layer can push the contents along, okay? When they work together, we get that the classic um, motion down the alimentary canal, the peristalsis, when we get both compression and lateral and um, uh, movement forward. 
And then outside, all the way on the outside, is the serosa, right? So when you look down into your um, donor, that's what you see in the GI tract. The shiny outer covering is the serosa, right? So it's also called the visceral peritoneum, right? You might have heard it called that too uh, in anatomy. Okay, so that's the basic structure. Now, I say mostly consistent. There are areas of the GI tract that don't have all the layers, okay? But generally speaking, the 15 plus feet of it that is longest does, right? So, um, <clears throat> have you taken the GI tract out of your donors yet? Did anybody get you stretch it out? No, I want to. Nobody wanted to? No, I want to. Well, you can't. So you're for that. Well, you have to ask me, Dr. Burgraff, I guess. Um, but it's that's a fun thing to do if you have the time to see how long it is. All right. Um, same idea, different book. The only reason I put this in here is it gives you a little context, right, of what this actually looks like. So the mesentery kind of hangs from the posterior abdominal wall, right? It's a bilateral or two-layer thing. It's continuous with the serosa, right? And then as we go from serosa in, you know, we have our um, longitudinal layer, our circular layer, submucosal layer, and mucosal layer. I hear you, Peanut. <clears throat> um, until we get to the inside, right? Now, this also shows you the folds, right? So. Digestion, the final step of digestion and absorption. What's she doing? Meowing. Just meowing. Okay. She's talking back to me. Um, <clears throat> both of those things uh, require lots of membrane, right? Lots of membrane expansion. So we see lots of surface area expansion in the GI tract. Okay, so macroscopically we have folds, right? Have you cut open the GI tract yet? You're gonna see the folds, okay? So there's folds, and then the, the, the folds themselves are covered in a kind of thick carpet, right? The tufts of the carpet are these little villi that stand up. Both things, the folds and then the villi are doing the same uh, job, which is expanding the membrane, right? Because uh, remarkably, our digestive tract has the same surface area as like a tennis court, okay? Now, how do you cram all that in a human abdomen? You make a lot of folds, right? And that's exactly how the GI tract has evolved. Um, and of course, the reason for that is because the epithelium is where the work is being done. So we wanna have a lot of epithelium to do a lot of work. If we're gonna have a lot of epithelium, we need a lot of surface area, 